Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am going to give you a tour of my Sarah J Moss shelves today, an in-depth tour of every copy of every book that I have of hers. I'm going to talk about ones that I have that are signed and personalized, and then just additions that I love as well as accessories. So this is not a full bookshelf tour, but just a specific Sarah J Moss tour. So get excited because I love filming this. I can't wait to do a actual bookshelf tour, but that will be coming soon. So for now, here are all of my books. Get started on my Sarah J Moss collection. We're going to start with Crescent City. This is the first in a new city or a new series by Sarah J Moss. And obviously I have quite a few of the first book. <laughs> so, okay. So this is the Sarah shelf for specifically Crescent City related items. First of all, we have the light it up embroidery hoop. And I got this off of an Etsy shop. I really like it. I just think it adds a special little touch in the back there. We have um, a poster that was sent out for all pre-orders and it is um, a bigger version of basically the cover art that it looks like that. So we have that in the background and then it's not really signed by her, it's just a printing of that. As well as a picture of Bryce over there in the corner that I got from A Touch of Magic Designs. And yeah, so I also have on the shelf some Wiccan Jane wax melts and it's obsidian glass salt and that's kind of something from the actual story i'm not sure if you can see like the obsidian glass there but this is kind of just a prop you could actually use them i've never opened them have no idea what they smell like but i just like to have them sitting on my shelf i also have these two candles one says light it up asshole and it smells like lilac nutmeg ride or die and the inside looks like that. I've never actually burned them. The other one is lighted up, bitch. And it's leather, nutmeg, ride or die. <laughs> Say it is also by Wick and Jane as well. And it is rainbow themed on the inside. So those just sit over here in the corner. All right, to start off with the actual books, First of all, I ordered this one from Amazon. It is the Polish, I believe, edition, but it's all blue, which I love that. I think that is such a fun um, look to this actual book and just ordered it from Amazon. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I can certainly let you know if it is. No sprayed edges or anything, just kind of normal. Then we have the Waterstones edition, which is just the paperback. It has red sprayed edges. It's not signed or anything, but it's just the regular old paperback. So this was kind of a mistake. <laughs> uh, this is the German edition, and I was hoping to get the version that had the sprayed edges with the cover art on the spray. Um, you, it, it was one of those like hit or miss if you ordered it from where was it book depository there was a chance that you could get that version unfortunately i did not so you know this is what the german edition looks like in case you're interested <laughs> mine still is in the plastic wrap all right next up we have this version which is one of the u.s regular hardback covers let's see if there's anything special ah so this one is a sign first edition as you can see which is why I got it and that's the inside of Crescent City which is the same print that I have behind there then we have the Waterstones edition which has sprayed edges and the difference I actually like the spine better so you can see the two spine differences there for the US and the um, British edition. I actually prefer the Waterstones one a bit more. So that is that one. And then lastly, we have another US copy. It is no different than the other copy that I have. <laughs> and 
then we have the tour edition of Crescent City. So this was sent out in 2020. You were actually only supposed to be able to get it if you went to the tour, but the tour was canceled because of COVID. So they actually put all of them online and it was kind of luck of the draw if you were able to get, get one. I adore this edition. On the back it says, through love all is possible. I think this is such an awesome edition. It has a ribbon bookmark to it. It also came with a pen and they came with a signed book plate. So you could put that one in there. But it's essentially the same. It just has that ribbon bookmark and then the cover art is on the inside. And then there's a map too. Not sure if anyone's interested in that. But I keep that in the back corner. And then this was the pen. Well, you can't, this was the, the backing of the pen that it came with. And then lastly on the shelf, which you can't really see, is this print over here of Bryson Hunt. And I love this one. It's from a uh, Court of Books and Family on Instagram. I really liked that one. So I have it sitting on my shelf so that I can look at that one more. So yeah, that is all of my Crescent City. I'm sure we'll have more when the uh, second book comes out next January. Super excited about that. Okay, moving on to a much thicker shelf. <laughs> we have my Akatar shelf, which is probably going to need some uh, expansion here because we have officially pretty much run out of room. <laughs> so first up on the Akatar shelf is this Feyre pen. It is by Silk Tara. And you were able to get this if you signed up for this pre-order that was for an Akatar calendar. This was, gosh, when was this? This was a couple years ago. And I will show you that calendar in question, but this is just an enamel pen. She has her starfall dress on. I think it's stunning. So the calendar looks like this. And we have our gorgeous Farah on the front. It's undated, which is great because you can use it anytime you want, like all the time, like me. And the art is, so for January we have our daddy as, February is, this is art from Akawar, which I love. Then we have Tamlin, then we have the girls of the inner circle for April, we have the Morgan for May, and each month has a different artist. So a bunch of artists came together to put this calendar together. June, we have Cassian and Nesta here. July, we have the Archeron sisters. August, another great one of Cassian. Also, please note, he basically has a winter soldier arm going on and I love it. September, we have Lucian. October, we have Amran. November, we have our Surreal. And then lastly, December, we have Mom and Dad with Valaris in the background. Stunning. So that's the calendar that the pen came with. Up next on the shelf, we have this little chess piece that I believe is from a company called Shelf Love Crate. It has since gone out of business. It is no longer. You might be able to find these plopping around on Depop somewhere. But you could get like, I have a ton of them for different series, but this one's Farah. And then we have a little Reese and he's just so cute. I just really like these. I know that they're chess pieces, but I just think they're a lot of fun. And then we also have this candle here of Starfall. And it is bamboo, fresh lilies and soft woody notes. And I don't see the name of whoever created this. It must have just come in a box. It might have been in a fairy loot, to be honest with you. Fake Crate put out collectible coins. So this one is all of the quartz. All the different quartz. Let's see if you can see it better. And then Valaris in the middle. So behind that, I got this. 2018 ink book sketchbook by Amanda Lore. I ordered this off of Etsy, I do believe. And it's just a bunch of sketches, like black and white sketches of Akatar. So pretty fun. It's a nice little collectible item. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of Alice out there. So I like having this. 
Look at Tamlin. <laughs> There's New Orleans Carriage Wind. The Adder. So I think, I'm pretty sure uh, Inktober is, they sketch something every day the month of October. So this has like one from every day in a bind up. So I love having that. And then this is a Quarter Wings and Ruins Indigo Edition. So Indigo is a bookstore, I believe in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. So it has, um, it has art on the inside. It's not signed or anything. It does have art on the inside. Which, gotta love that. And I actually found this recently. Um, someone posted that this was still available. And so I was able to snatch it up. It was not a copy that I had. And I'm really happy that I have it now. Because that is some really good art. And then on the side here, we've got a little bit of art. So we have A Court of Books and Family, which this is chapter 55, obviously. Uh, I've got two patches. So we have the Spy Master, so an Azrael patch and a Cassian commander patch. Um, these are from Fay Crate. And then this little tiny Feyre is from the calendar pre-order. And then this Valaris postcard, I believe is from Fay Crate as well, that was just sent as part of like a box. So now that we've gotten this section here out of the way, first up, we just have your regular, regular old Akatar paperback. But this particular paperback if I'm not mistaken, it's signed. Yes, folks, you heard it right here. <laughs> so actually this one was from the Empire of Storms tour in 2016, which you can see the stamp. So it has an extra signature on it in gold from hers and it's just signed as well. So we've got like double signage here. So I went to the Empire of Storms tour that was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It was one of her stops so I was able to stack like rack up on quite a few signed books there and get a couple personalized so that was an exciting day for me I'll plop a picture right here of me meeting Sarah <laughs> okay so we have that one then the next great thing that we have I went to my local used bookstore and I haven't been there in like a year. It's in Raleigh. It's a, well, it's actually in Cary, which is a suburb of Raleigh, but it's a great place. It's called Mr. Mike's Used Books. And I happened to find this gem on the shelf, which is an arc of Akatar. So it's advanced, uncorrected proof of the first book. It is not going to ever be for sale. It's probably going to be buried with me. That's my current plan is, you know, it's going in the grave. <laughs> but this guy, you can see, has the marketing campaign and everything on the inside. It was such a great find. I cannot even fathom that I got it for what I paid. Up next, we have the regular Akatar um, hardcover. It is now out of print. This version is. So yeah, if you see it and ever at a used bookstore, I highly recommend that you pick it up. This is just the very first regular hardcover of this book. Up next, this is probably my most cherished, well one of them because that, that arc is pretty cherished now. But this is probably easily my most cherished piece of Sarah J Moss collection. <laughs> this is the A Court of Mist and Fury hardcover and it should be signed and personalized to me by Sarah. This is what I had one of the two books that I had her sign on that specific tour. It is very much one of my very favorite pieces of merch that I had. Well, you know, it's my very favorite book that I have from her. So it will always be my fave. And that's the back of it. Up next, we have A Court of Wings and Ruin. And again, like I said, these are now out of print, so you can't get these covers anymore. 
pretty sure, yep, so this one's also personalized. I did not have it personalized in person. This was one that you could order and ask for them to personalize it. So I did just that. Here's the back of that one as well. And then lastly, we have a quart of Frosted Starlight. So like I said, this is um, one that you could order personalized and that is what I did back when it was way easier to get her signature. I tried to pre-order and find a place that was doing signatures. And there's the back of that one. Then we have the tour edition of A Court of Silver Flames. It is not signed or personalized or anything like this. You could only get this edition if you signed up to go to her like virtual tour this year for um, A Court of Silver Flames. There's really nothing all that special about it. To be honest, it's probably one of my least favorite like looking books. I don't love it. I think the tour edition of Crescent City is way better. And then finally on this little portion of my shelf. I have the um, special edition of Akatar, and it comes in like this really fancy slip cover. It has a ribbon bookmark. And then if you take it out, it is embossed on the hardcover there with Farah in the forest. And then you can see Tamlin in his wolf form or beast form on the other side has this really pretty um, end pages there. And it's not signed. I think you might still be able to get this off of Amazon because I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. So this one's generally pretty easy to find. Moving along, we have another set of books, which these have their original covers. I pretty much bought this set. So this is the newest set, which are these editions which I don't much care for. I think it's very, you know, people are either really love them or really hate them. <laughs> I'm on the side of really hates. So I only bought them so that I could use my um, Alumicrate dust jackets that I got from their most recent like box that they did for these. And I'll put the artist's name down below so that you know where I got, well, these are no longer available, but, um, these are stunning, stunning dust jackets of this whole series. So these are the exact same books. And I have, I just need to get a copy of A Court of Frost and Starlight. I just don't have it. Um, but that is Akatar. There's the back. And the spine. And Court of Wings and Ruin with the inner circle on it. And Mom and Dad on the back. <laughs> um, we have this little globe from Fay Crate a long, 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 long time ago. Has all the lands of Prithian on it. Right over here is Highburn. Um, See the fairy realm is all right there. And then here are all the courts. So it's a really fun little addition to the shelf. Obviously we have the Litjoy crate, which I also un like unboxed this recently. And it is a shadow box created by Rosie Thorns. And it's of Starfall. I'll try to get a better, more in depth view of that. I also have this candle called I Will Find You. It's Cassian and Nesta. Here's the inside, it's just brown. And it's by Wiccan Fable. Um, and then we also have A Court of Silver Flames in the same Alumicrate dust jacket. And then we have Nesta on the back of this one. I love those, stunning. But you can see Feyre and Reese. Rosie Thorns, this is a paper craft, so it's like all the different layers. Like I think you can tell right there. And it's just a USB, so it plugs into like a power bank basically. So my last two Akatar books 
are both of my editions of A Court of Silver Flames. So one is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. So that just means that they have special bonus scenes in the very back. So the Barnes and Noble one had a Farrah and Reese bonus and um, it is also signed. This was the only way you could get signed editions this season. She didn't do any personalized ones. You could only pre-order them from Barnes and Noble or um, Books of Million, which is this one. So this one has a bonus scene of Azrael in the back. So, and it is also signed. In the back here, I have another chapter 55 print of Feyre and Reese. <laughs> it's a bit more risque, so I kind of have it in the back there. Um, but yeah, that is the overview of my Akatar shelf. All right. So let's take a look at the Throne of Glass shelves. Yes, folks, you heard that right. There are two shelves dedicated to Throne of Glass. So I can't really get my um, tripod up to that level. So I'll give you a quick overview of how they look currently set up. And then I'll just bring everything down individually, more than likely to chat about it. But this is how they are currently displayed. So I'll just bring everything down to this spot here to chat. So as we also had on the Actar shelves, I have a little baby Selena. And also I should say, Bethany, if you're watching this, we're only on Air of Fire. So you should maybe watch this video at this point later. Cool. Next up, we have the same chest piece of Rowan with his short hair vibe going on. I love his like face tattoo vibe, you know, real cool. Okay, so this is a recent edition. Uh, this is a print that actually is a really pretty print version. So we've got the whole gang here. And this is from Fabled Merch. But again, I don't necessarily recommend <laughs> the company. It took me nine months, 10 months to actually get my product. So then we have this candle and it's a, I claim you Aelin candle. And this one is from Wicked Fable as well. It's grapefruit and mint. Also on this shelf, we do have this fabled merch, um, book 10 kind of situation here. And it's actually double-sided. So this is obviously Valaris and we have the eye of Elena. Oh, and I never noticed, but this is also Feyre's eye that Reese tattoos on her hand. So. And look, Abraxos is up there. Love it. But again, remember, I don't necessarily recommend this company. <laughs> then I also have this necklace here. I have no idea where this came from as I got it on Depop from another seller, but it is the Stag of the North. Well, really Lord of the North. Kind of butchered that. And then we also have on this other book up here, this is from Fay Crate. But it is the Eye of Elena. It's a really nice replica too. Okay, so <laughs> this here is obviously from How to Train Your Dragon. It's a Funko Pop and it should be toothless, but I like to put it here because I like to pretend that it's a Braxos. <laughs> but you know, we, that's how we live our lives. So I like to have him chilling on the shelf like he's a Braxos. Next up, these are recent additions to the shelf. This is another shelfie made by um, A Touch of Magic Designs on Instagram. This is Dorian. I already had, like they have a bunch of the other characters, but I don't have like a lot of Dorian merch and I really like him. He's really cool. Great quality too. Couldn't recommend their shop more. And then obviously we have our Manon shelfie here with her long nails. I think she turned out awesome. So she's chilling with Dorian. And then we have training and mistword candle. This is kind of an air of fire themed candle here. And it's cypress and oak forest trees. And it's lime green, it smells great. Also, my dog is squeaking in the background. I really hope you can't hear him. Oh, okay. And apparently, 
as you burn this candle, you will find a shape-shifting treasure inside. <laughs> I've never burned it though, so who knows? First of all, this is one of my favorites. This is a copy of Kingdom of Ash and it's a Waterford edition. So it has sprayed edges and I believe it was only available at the tour um, for this book. And I got it for a really great price on eBay and I adore it because this is exactly what the like UK edition looks like, but they don't have sprayed edges. You could only get that, I believe on the tour. So this edition is actually pretty special to me. And my goal is to eventually have all of the UK paperback copies. I have some of them, but not all. But this one is like extra special. And I love the white vibe that they have. It really is nice. Next on the front of the UK copies that I have, we'll go through those fairly quickly. I have Throne of Glass here. Nothing too special about it. Just got this one off of a books. It is just a simple white copy of it. Then we have Crown of Midnight. Again, this is the UK copy. I do love how vibrant the back of this copy is though, in that red dress. Then we have Air of Fire, which is my favorite of all of them. All the Queen of Shadows is kind of a close second favorite, but I do, I just love Air of Fire. Here, here's the spine. And look at that back. Absolutely stunning. So I would recommend, got these all fairly great prices on Abe Books, so I would definitely recommend that. And then the last UK copy I have is Tower of Dawn, which kind of throws me for a loop because it's the only one that's not white. So it kind of annoys me that it's not. But there is Tower of Dawn. It's got some sticky residue on it. I need to try to get that off, but there you go. Next up, we have the collector's edition of Throne of Glass. So very similarly to the um, Akatar special edition, this is a slip cover. Here's the copy on the inside. No spread edges or anything. It does have Harrison's emblem on the back. And I believe this is almost the same in papers that were on Akatar. And I don't believe, no, there's not a, oh, there's a ribbon bookmark, but it's inside here, so. I want to say I got this for a pretty good price off of Book Outlet, maybe, at some point. Pretty sure. But it's it was generally easy to find. All right, so next up is the set of book jackets, or well, this is a set of Throne of Glass that has special um, book jackets to them. So I keep a couple of them on display just because I really like them. So first off, we'll start off with Assassin's Blade, and this is from the Bookish Box. They are no longer available. I got these over a year ago. There was a kind of an annoyance in my opinion on these dust jackets because they came in like three separate boxes and you had to buy all three special edition boxes at different times and so the dust jackets don't necessarily match the spines don't match and it kind of makes me angry like the whole vibe of them changed at the end so anyway I could uh, you'll see as we go but this is Assassin's Blade this is one of my favorite covers because it has like all of the different characters on it I think Selena looks awesome uh, you can really see her blue and gold eyes there. Really good. There's the jacket, like the spine doesn't have any titles or anything, which is fine. And then there's the back with the dagger. Next up, we have Throne of Glass. Not my favorite cover of this, but it's pretty cool. And then there's the back. I do enjoy that. Then we have Crown of Midnight, which I really like that Nehemia is uh, placed on this pretty prominently spine. In the back we have Dorian and Kaol. Next up we have my favorite, Air of Fire. I think she looks great on the cover there. 
again, totally different <laughs> spine. <laughs> and then we have Rowan on the back, long haired version of Rowan. Then we have, so this is my other favorite version that I keep out at all times, which is this Queen of Shadows. So we have Caltain on there, which I think she looks, I mean, that is just stunning. And then we have Aelin in her dragon dress, which, ugh, stop right there. But then the back, and this is what I keep displayed, is this amazing art of Manon. I mean, I can't. This is definitely one of my most favorite covers of that and it's just whoo it's epic running out of room and then the spine totally different so okay then here's where things just completely changed now we have empire of storms and it's kind of got like lysandra adian um a lead on there as well as um the dragon and then we've got aelin and then we have see how the Spines just really don't match. Here, let me grab. I mean, we really just took a nosedive here. <laughs> I mean, they're still pretty, but boy, it threw me for a loop. And then we have the back there. Next up, we have Tower of Dawn, which I do, I like this vibe because you don't see a whole lot of Nezrin and Sartak. And then Irene and Kaol there in the chair. Plain back, and then we have the emblem that is on the other Tower of Dawns as well. And then lastly, we have Kingdom of Ash, and we have Aelin there, plain, and then we have the stag and the Terrison emblem on the back. So again, I like these. They're pretty, but it really annoys me that they don't match, <laughs> but it's okay. I'll live to find another day. All right, here is just a, since I'm just showing my whole collection, this is just a random edition of the U.S. Throne of Glass. And a lot of times what I do is I'll find them at a used bookstore and just grab them because it's nice to have extra copies because I have multiple dust jacket sets. So it works out really well if I have like a random Throne of Glass or anything like that that I see, I just pick them up because eventually these will be hard to find. And I mean, it's just nice to have them. So it just kind of sits in the back here behind my Manon piece. Um, okay. So next up we have the paperback US editions. And yes, I know this is getting excessive. I'm well aware, but it's okay. <laughs> so this is obviously Throne of Glass and I do have Assassin's Blade. Okay. So first of all, I believe this copy is signed. And this is one of the ones that I got at the Empire of Storms tour. So it has her double signature on top and then the signature at the bottom. So these are the US paperbacks. This is a bit out of order, but here is the US paperback copy of the Assassin's Blade. And I believe, yep, so this one is signed as well. And it's from the Empire of Storms tour, which worked out great because I was able to snag quite a few signed copies. I think at this point I do have, I confirmed it, but I do have every copy of, or every one of each book signed of Throne of Glass. It's not all like paperbacks, but I have one of every one at least signed. <laughs> Next up, I have Crown of Midnight in the US paperback. This one is signed and personalized. I wanna say I got this one from a Polycon, which is a book, Comic-Con, that Jennifer L. Armentrout put together. And she and Sarah are friends, so I was able to order personalized copies from that, yeah, from that con. So, oh, I think I forgot to show you the backs of the other ones. I don't think these are as pretty as the uh, UK. Here's the back of Throne of Glass. And the back of Assassin's Blade. That one is pretty. I don't know that I've ever really paid much attention to that one, but this is nice. Up next, of course, is Air of Fire, U.S. paperback in the green. This one is signed and personalized. And again, I got it from a Polycon, which again, worked out very well. Then we have Queen of Shadows. Definitely my second favorite. 
I just, I adore the dragon dress. It is just stunning. And this one is not signed. So I believe this is where I stopped getting paperback signed because I have them in hardback signed. Then we have Empire of Storms and pretty sure based on that sticker, I got it from a uh, book outlet. This originally came from a Meyer, but I got it from book outlet for pretty, a pretty cheap price. Then we have the paperback version of Tower of Dawn. And then lastly, this thick boy is Kingdom of Ash. So that concludes all of my paperback copies. Embers of Memory, a Throne of Glass game. I've never played it because I have no one to play it with. Because I feel like you kind of have to read the series to play this game. But the art on this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it is so good. So here's who it's illustrated by. Just really, what an awesome game. You just open it up and it has like different cards. And I've never even read the rules, but the cards look like that. So it just chills on my shelf. All right, so moving on to the second shelf. Here's a bit of a conundrum right here. I randomly have the UK version of this Throne of Glass Collector's Edition. And the reason, and it says Meet the Assassin on the back. The reason I have this is it was coming, it came with the um, Kingdom of Ash with the red sprayed edges from Waterstones on eBay. You just kind of got both in that listing. So I just have it on the shelf. Um, another awesome addition that I have is the original hardback cover, which this cover is awful, but <laughs> we do have this. Um, I think Selena just looks way too girly and it is, does, does she give off Assassin's vibes? I think not, but it's cool to have. Also this <laughs> two men love her. The whole land fears her. Only she can save them all. That's so dramatic. Next up, these are dust jackets from Nerdy Ink. I had, they just had the regular US hardcover dust jackets on them, but I think it is, these are really awesome covers. So this is obviously Sam Cortland for the Assassin's Blade. There's the spine. And then that's the back. So this is consistently basically the back and then they all have a quote on them. Next, we have Throne of Glass. And we have Selena on the cover. Then we have Crown of Midnight, which I believe this is Dorian. Yeah, because Chaos should be Tower of Dawn. So this should be Dorian. So just the color scheme changes, but this art itself stays the same. Then we have Era Fire. So we have Rowan on here. I just am rereading this now, and this quote is from uh, Maeve. <laughs> I wish you to become who you were born to be. Just heard it in the car. And actually, so this is where my hardcovers, I believe, start getting signed again. Then we have Queen of Shadows, and we have Manon and Abraxos, which I love that fact. And this one is signed and personalized. Then we have Empire of Storms with Lysandra gracing this cover, which I love that. So we have that. And then Nameless is my price on the back. And again, this one. Then we have Tower of Dawn, so we obviously have Kaol. That one is signed and personalized as well. In this set, we have the Kingdom of Ash with Irene on the cover of that. And of course, that one is signed. My favorite part, really, of my bookshelf is the fact that I have set it up to where these covers all kind of go together. Um, this was a Barnes and Noble exclusive edition of Kingdom of Ash. So I bought three of them or maybe four to make this happen because I love Charlie Bowater's art of them on this set. It's just, 
chef's kiss. So I want it to be displayed on my bookshelf in that manner so I can see it. But these are all Kingdom of Ash, but we'll take a look at them anyway. <laughs> okay, so these are all gonna be very similar, but I'll show you like the full art situation. Um, we have my favorite, your favorite, everyone's favorite, Rowan. And then it does like, so this is the full piece. We have Kale, Rowan, Aelin, Dorian, and Manon. And this is art by Charlie Bowater. And it was only available on the Barnes & Noble Special Edition. This is just a naked Kingdom of Ash. And it does have her signature on it, which is pretty cool. I can't remember. Yeah, so this one is signed. Now, I picked this one up this weekend, actually. It is a Target exclusive Kingdom of Ash that was... Um, at the used bookstore for $3.99. And like I said, you just can't not pick something like that up. $3.99, man. And I don't know. I think the only thing that makes it exclusive, I was trying to figure that out, is I'm pretty sure it has like a bonus thing that I've never heard on the audio because I do prefer to listen to the audio um, of this series. I believe that there is like something after the very end because I was trying to figure it out. Oh yeah, so it's um, basically this little short story called A Better World. I need to read that, because who knew? So I've got that, just it chills like behind all the other editions. <laughs> and for whatever reason, back when I pre-ordered Tower of Dawn, they actually sent me an additional one. Um, I'm pretty sure it was, let's see. I'm trying to remember why I have this, but I think I just accidentally got two. Yeah, so that one is signed and personalized, and I didn't order two, but somehow was sent two. Then we have the middle Kingdom of Ash that I just leave set up like that. This one is just a normal Kingdom of Ash edition. And then the last one is the one I keep with Dorian's face on it. And this one is signed. So I keep it sitting up like that. I honestly wish I could have the whole art out, but it is definitely one of my favorite ways to display this series. So that pretty much takes care of what is sitting on the shelf at this point. I do have another little display of, of the whole series out in my living room, and I keep these particular ones out there. So these were the miniature editions that they came out, which are pretty cool because each book has a different name. So it says to celebrate Sam with this special mini edition, his name will be highlighted in Avery River teal ink. So it's almost like, I don't know, Bible-esque. But anytime Sam's name is mentioned, um, it'll be in this blue ink. So we have the Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, which this one has Selena in violet ink. Crown of Midnight, and this one has Dorian with Crimson ink. Kind of wish Nehemia's name was the one highlighted, but whatever. <laughs> then we have Air of Fire. Rowan has Terrace in Green, and then we have Queen of Shadows. Manon has Red ink as well. Empire of Storms. So let's see, Lysandra has orange ink. Interesting. Tower of Dawn has Kaol in blue. And Kingdom of Ash should be Aelin in gold ink. So to give you like a comparison, here is a regular edition and there's the mini. So definitely tiny little editions there. But I do like them. They're really cool. I think they're really fun. I don't think I'd ever read them because, like, holy cow, my eyes would die. I think it's worth mentioning that Fay Crate did put out a line of dust jackets that came with a, like, special edition box that that necklace came in. Um, I like them. I think they're really pretty. I like them better than the bookish box ones because they match. But, uh, again, some of the art from the bookish box to me is better. So I've considered like switching it out if I ever feel like it. There's the Assassin's Blade. But I really like the spine on these. And Nehemia looks great. 
So I just kind of have these sitting in the wings. And if I collect enough of the books randomly from used bookstores, like I can put these on. So it's just nice to have options, people. And these are really well made. And then there's Kingdom of Ash. I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. So last, but certainly not least, these are the other books that are sitting out in my living room. I'm going to set them up here. So this is the Juniper Books dust jacket set of Akatar. Um, it only is, I believe, for the first three. I'm not sure if they put out any more for the rest of the series. And then these are Fae Crate uh, bookends of Feyre and Reese. But I love how you get them out and then the three stars on the spines. I think they're very simple, but super great dust jackets. I mean, they're absolutely stunning. So those also sit out in my living room on some floating shelves that I have. All right, so last but not least, we have the do uh, the box set of all of Throne of Glass, which I ordered from Book Outlet at a great, fantastic price. And this is empty. This is simply just the dust jacket sitting in this box because all of the books are being used on my shelf for further additions with um, all the different dust jack jackets, as you saw. And then we also have the box for Nerdy Ink that all of their... Um, jackets came in and I go more in depth in a different video of that so I can link that down below if you're interested but yeah that pretty much sums my Sarah J Moss collection <laughs> minus like all of the art that we have in this room so I think she looks good Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed getting an in-depth look at all of the Sarah J Moss books that I own currently as of 2021. Obviously, I want to expand this pretty soon. I guarantee you this entire shelf will probably be dedicated to her. I know that she's not everyone's cup of tea, but her books have gotten me through a lot of really dark and hard times in my life. I started reading her stories back in probably 2015. So I have had a lot of these books near and dear to my heart for a really long time. And they're very, very special to me. So I hope you enjoyed this in-depth tour. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.